Uh, I want to talk about sustainability in open source, uh, about a project called SourceCred, and about playing games. To start, uh, I'll introduce myself. I'm Dandelion Minet. I use they, them pronouns. I'm affiliated with a cool company called Protocol Labs. And I've had the privilege of working on and maintaining open source software for the past six years, uh, starting with a data visualization and charting library, uh, moving on to TensorFlow, where I was kind of uh, chiefly responsible for the visualization toolkit, and finally and most recently, SourceGrep, which I'm gonna tell you all about. But let's start with open source sustainability. A lot of people have been asking lately, how can we raise money for open source? And there have been a lot of interesting experiments. For example, uh, Open Collective kind of allows you to have a patronage model for open source projects. Open Source Coin is creating a cryptocurrency that's intended to fund and reward open source projects. Uh, we've got cool ideas like maybe we could use a harbinger tax to force proprietary users to pay for the open source. And we've even seen experiments like ad supported open source that sort of pops up messages in your terminal. Now what we've been spending less time thinking about is how we're going to distribute that money if we get it. So let's imagine that this represents an open source community. You've got all kinds of people in it. You've got the maintainers up front who are you know, in the trenches every day making sure this software works. But then you've got all these other players. You know, some of them are fixing the occasional bug. Some of them are answering questions on the forum or fixing typos in documentation. Some of them are running meetups. Some of them are just telling their friends about it. And we need to find a way to distribute the money that open source projects will raise between this group of people. Now what I hear a lot of people say is, let's just pay the maintainers. And so what that means is we're going to take these two people in the front, we've got the most power, and we're going to give all of the money to them. And so I'd like to invite you to think for a moment about what that will mean for these communities. And maybe in historical precedent, when have we tried to solve problems by giving all of the power to the people who are already in the front and already have the most power? And how has that turned out? <laughs> so what I think this means is that we're proposing that a special class of privileged people are going to get all of the rewards that we're putting into open source, that we're not coming up with a framework for how we're going to incrementally share those rewards with other people, uh, many kinds of contributions that are not the contributions that maintainers make, are going to go unrecognized, and many people in the community are going to feel marginalized or alienated. This means unhealthy power structures, and this means we won't have a sustainable community. Sustainability is more than just getting money. It's using that in a way that helps the community flourish. So I really want to emphasize that I think this is a really bad idea. Uh, I think it's going to do structural damage to open source communities. I think if you even just look at the comments on things like recent experiments and the, the ad-supported open source that I mentioned, there are a lot of people saying, hey, wait a bit, what about the other projects? What about the other people who contributed to this? Like, why are they not getting any money? And you're going to see things like people forking projects to try and like take the power back. You're going to have these really like hard conflicts we don't know how to resolve. Uh, we're drawn to the solution for a good reason, which is that maintainers are feeling urgent pain. They're super burned out. They're like giving their hearts and souls to open source projects and they feel like they're getting nothing in return. And so we need to fix that, but we need to fix it in a way that's still going to lead to a healthy and flourishing community. Uh, and I think the issue right now is we don't see any good alternatives to just paying the maintainers. So let's take a look at what alternatives there are. Uh, to start, we could try to pay people based on metrics. So maybe we're gonna measure the number of lines of code you commit, or the number of commits that you merged, or the number of bugs that you fixed. And I think it's easy to see that these are all going to be really easy to gain. Uh, I could go and reindent the whole code base, thus changing every line of code and triggering a flame war that will never die. I could spam tiny commits. Maybe instead of one feature, I find a way to split it into like 14 little changes. Uh, or I could even start sneaking in little bugs into my code, because then I know how to fix them later. So let's not do that. Uh, another alternative, which has gotten a bit more attention, is a sort of bounty or contractor model. So the idea here is that you're going to spec out the work in advance, you're gonna come up with a price, uh, and then once the work is done, you pay for it. Simple. A Couple cool projects like Gitcoin and Colony are like finding some traction here. And I think it is a good fit for some portion of the work in open source projects, but there's still a lot of issues that prevent us from using it as a one solution. So the problems with bounties and contracts include 
Lots of work can't be neatly spec'd, and we don't have a way to pay bounties for writing the specs. Uh, it encourages among contributors a short-term competitive mindset, where you're like racing to check the boxes so you can win the bounty. It's really hard to value this work up front, in part because as coders know, occasionally you find like rabbit holes and yaks you need to shave and something that you thought would take 20 minutes actually takes six hours. Uh, and then it's gonna also make these really nasty fights about whether the work was good enough. You know, maybe somebody really tried and they got something that mostly works and now they want the full payout, but other people think it's not quite up to snuff. Um, it doesn't reward the unexpected contributions where somebody comes and fixes something that you didn't even know needs fixing. And those are often the most valuable. And finally, it just financializes everything. It means that every time someone's hacking on a project, they're going to be asking not how much value can I add to this, but how much am I gonna get paid for this? And I think that would really do a lot to corrupt the spirit of open source. So let's think about what we would need from a system that could distribute the money to open source projects. Uh, I think it needs to be able to recognize many different kinds of contributions, whether it's coding or design work, whether it's mediation, outreach, reviewing stuff. There's lots of different work, kinds of work that go into a project. It needs to be able to work retroactively, because it's impossible to tell upfront whether something is going to be you know, an incredibly important new feature that everyone will orient about, or a flash in the pan that people forget about after a week. Uh, so we need to be able to incorporate new information about what mattered as it comes in. And we need to start from objective data so that the system doesn't just become a popularity contest. But we also need a way to let in subjectivity because there's no algorithm or metric that's really going to tell you what was valuable. You need humans in that loop. Uh, it needs to be low friction. It needs to be something that people can come in and contribute and not be thinking at all about like money or points and just want to, make, want to provide value and get rewarded for it. Uh, and it needs, of course, to be transparent and open source. Otherwise, it's gonna have no legitimacy in these communities. So that segues into SourceCred, the project I'm working on. It's a reputation protocol for open collaboration, which basically means it's trying to use people's reputation to assign scores to the contributions that they're making to a project. I'm gonna dive into this, how this works exactly, uh, but I'm gonna start by talking about an algorithm called PageRank. So in 1998, these two Stanford graduate students wrote a paper called the PageRank Citation Ranking, Bringing Order to the Web. And it described an approach for giving scores to websites. You have some trusted sites that start with a score, and then sites get score if they're linked to by another site that has score. So it's this funny kind of recursive algorithm. Uh, it gets results like this, where you can see that maybe this node E got a lot of links, but nobody linked to them. Maybe these are like spam sites that were made by some botnet. So E doesn't get that much cred from these, from these like unconnected nodes. Whereas C was only linked to once, but it was linked to by a really important node. So C gets a lot of score. Uh, and it turned out that this algorithm works really surprisingly well, because these two graduate students were named Larry Page and Sergey Brin, and they went and just launched a startup and the whole idea of the startup is we're gonna use this algorithm to make a search engine and assign scores, you know, filter, filter content on the web. Uh, the search engine was called Google, and the rest is history. And SourceGrad's approach could be described as PageRank all the things. Or to be a little bit more specific, PageRank all of the contributions. Let's look at how this works. First, contributions are represented as nodes in a graph. So maybe we have a bug report and a pull request here. And these contributions are related by edges. So maybe this, this pull request is fixing the bug, and so it references that bug report. Now, contributors are also nodes in the graph, and they're also connected to their work. So there are authorship edges connecting the bug report to the reporter and the pull request to the coder. Now, the first thing to note is that this can represent lots of different kinds of contribution, because a graph is a really abstract structure. So if we want to represent pull request reviews, we can just add a node that represents the review, and then the pull request will depend on the review, and the review depends on the pull request. It also gives an outlet for representing subjective information. So for example, the maintainer could come and give a thumbs up to this pull request. And because the maintainer has a lot of score, or a lot of cred, that will give more cred to the pull request. And finally, it can update in response to new information. 
So let's say we make a GitHub release, and this GitHub release calls out this pull request and is like, thanks to pull request number 78 for you know, fixing this important bug, which you often see in GitHub releases, and that will go and retroactively give a lot more cred to the pull request. So I think the first thing that people will ask is, what about gaming? Uh, it's not like PageRank is some kind of magic algorithm that totally prevents gaming. And in fact, Google has got really large teams of people that are just devoted to tweaking the algorithm and moderating it so that it won't get taken over. Uh, and I think the answer is that cred is a community score. It's really specific to the values and perspective and subjectivity of a particular community that's working on a particular project. And so it needs and can benefit from community moderation. So people, maybe initially the maintainers, are going to be empowered to look at this cred distribution uh, and then say, okay, you know, somebody came and just made 700 new users' accounts and all uploaded this comment, we're gonna delete those accounts or you know, regulate down the credit of the comment. Uh, it's transparent, and I'll get into that a little bit more later. And that transparency means that everyone in the project can tell if it's being gamed and can explore whether it's being set up in an unfair way. Uh, and then if the community's credit is bad, someone can fork it, because it's all open source. So you've got the same ability to exit that you would if a project had a really like evil maintainer. So at this point, I'll just go into the tech demo and take, let's take a look at source cred on libp2p. Uh, this is a really big multi-repository project. Uh, and we can see here how like, we can trace the trends of different people being involved. You know, Why Are You Sleeping and David Diaz were really big in the beginning, and then they kind of handed off maintainership after a lull to different people. And we can see scores for all these individuals. And source cred lets you introspect on why those scores are the way that they are. So this is now the cred on source cred itself. And we've got this person uh, named William Charkin who's got 430 cred. You might ask, why is that? And then we can see, okay, William has authored 500 pull requests. He's got 1,500 comments, 1,000 commits. It starts to make sense that he's got a lot of cred. And we can keep on asking questions. So we can say, okay, which of these, what were these pull requests really? Okay, the top pull request was creating a bridge for V1 and V3. Why did that earn cred? And it turns out it was referenced by three other pull requests, it was referenced by a lot of commits, uh, and so that's where its credit is coming from. And if we wanted to change the system, we can just play with the parameters. Maybe we think that pull request reviews are not getting enough cred, and we need to reward people more for doing that. We could just, anyone in the project could change the weights, uh, rerun the cred analysis, and then if they think that the new scores are better, they can suggest a change, you know, they can try to merge that change back to the canonical cred for the project. Uh, a big thing I want to do is, again, be able to catch lots of kinds of contributions, like things that aren't on GitHub at all. And so SourceCred has a discourse forum, which I highly recommend you come to if you're interested in the project, because this is where like, we're discussing everything, explaining things, trying to figure out where we should go next as a community. And I think it's really important that we give cred to people who are doing that important work, and not just you know, sending commits and pull review requests. So there's a plugin for source cred to discourse. And now if we look at the kinds of things that you get cred for, it's like authoring posts and topics. And we can look at what are the top topics. And actually two of these top topics are actually art. Because uh, there's a really talented artist named LB in the community. And they've made these really cool like posters just exploring different takes on source cred. And then since people have liked these posters, these are some of the highest cred contributions in the, in the discourse. So that's all cool. We've got this like prototype technology. It gives scores on open source projects. Where is this going? How do we like make this real? Uh, and so far, you know, I've shown this to a lot of open source maintainers, and people are like, "Oh yeah, that's pretty good. You know, those scores, those scores make sense to me. Cool." Uh, and then they move on because it's not really like actionable. You know, what are you going to do with this right now? So pretty good scores. Uh, so I want to get source credit to be really like tackling the hard challenges. Like, what happens when we start actually paying money based on these scores? What weird dynamics are going to come up? Uh, and how, you know, I, was, I talked about how we're going to moderate this, but won't that create a lot of like social tension in practice? How are we going to work through that? So it's time to make cred real. And I think it's really important that that happen within the source cred community itself. Because giving, creating systems that reify power and that give people money is really contentious and could do a lot of harm to communities if it's done poorly. And so I think source cred needs to dog food the system before we encourage anyone else to try to use it too. So a little bit of an aside. Uh, I grew up playing video games. 
And in particular, MMO is like World of Warcraft and EVE Online. And it really amazed me, it made an impression on me, how much games can bring people together. And how much community can get formed by people who are playing a game together. Even if it doesn't really matter. Even if all you get is like a shinier hammer or a faster spaceship. Uh, it feels real because the community makes it real. And so I want to ask you, would you like to play a game? <laughs> thermonuclear warfare. Without thermonuclear warfare. Uh, but there's some real stakes in this game. Stakes that are much nicer than nuclear warfare. Because we've set up an open collective for source cred uh, and raised some funding. And we now have a balance of $5,000 for the project. And the plan for this game is basically let's experiment with giving this $5,000 away to people who contribute to source cred. Just kind of see what happens. So here's a little overview of the game mechanics. To start, there are contributors, and contributors earn cred. And this is basically source cred thus far. And it's not a very exciting game. There's like not really much going on here. And so what we've done first is we've added a new group of people, the sponsors, uh, and these sponsors are going to donate money to the source cred treasury, and then we're going to pay P contributors based on their cred. So we're getting a little bit more interesting here. For the contributors, there's probably a reason to pay attention. But you might ask, okay, why are these sponsors playing? Like, what's their role? They just kind of show up and give money and go away? That's like not very interesting for them. I don't know, I'd want to play that game. Uh, so there's going to be another mechanic here, which is called mana. <coughs> playing with the name, I really like mana. And mana kind of represents how much you're trusted by source cred for having contributed in some way. So you can earn mana either by sponsoring source cred, in which case we trust you because you cared enough to like give us money, uh, or by contributing to the project, in which case we trust you because you've just shown up and done work. And interestingly enough, mana actually gives us a way to solve one of the other core problems in source cred, which is that we need some way to curate the cred graph. Maybe sometimes someone did a pull request that was really important, and then people didn't recognize how important it was, and that pull request is just languishing. We need some system where that mistake will get fixed, and ideally where people will get rewarded for fixing it. Uh, but at the same time, there has to be some cost to trying to train, change the graph because otherwise we'll just get overwhelmed with everyone trying to like get lucky, you know, making changes that benefit them. And so the idea is there's going to be this new group of players called curators, and the curator's job is to use mana, which represents trust, to make changes to the graph. And if they make a bunch of bad changes that people reject or delete, then they're just going to have wasted their mana for nothing. But if they make good changes, they're actually going to start to get cred, because you're helping the project not just by contributing to it, but you're also helping the project by making sure that the contributors get fairly rewarded. Uh, so this is still an early sketch, and I'm sure this game will change a lot. Uh, but why don't you come play with us? I think it'll be an interesting experiment, you know? I think it'll be a chance to like really try something new for rewarding open source, and maybe have a lot of fun in the progress. Uh, so you can come and contribute to designing the source cred game. Uh, you can come to our discourse, that's at discourse.sourcecred.io. And there's a whole category that's just full of like thoughts on how we can make this game work and how to make it better. You can also, of course, contribute to the code base. Uh, that's at github slash sourcecred slash sourcecred. And you can also just go to sourcecred.io as the entry point for everything. Uh, and if you want, you can also follow on like Twitter or GitHub or what have you. Here are the handles. Thank you very much for your sweat drenched attention. <laughs> I feel like you should be repping your SoundCloud at this point as well. Uh, questions? Thank you. Uh, who is printing mana and what can you do with it? Uh, who is, was the question who is printing who is money or mana? Ma mana, mana. Where, mana. Does it, where does it come from and what okay. can you do with it? So this is A, a great question to ask in the discourse, and you'll totally get some credit because <laughs> even the like basic questions we need to engage with. Uh, so the idea for mana, I'm going to go back a little bit to this, uh, this graph. So basically, uh, when, you, when you are sponsoring the project, you're going to get, uh, I'm going to preface this by saying this is really like a work in progress, and I've got a couple of different ideas how, for how this will work. So I'm going to give the simplest of the ideas, and then if you ask on the forum, we'll go into more depth on all the possibilities. Uh, but basically, the idea is that as a sponsor, when you donate to the treasury, you get mana. So maybe for every dollar you donate, you get 100 mana. And then as a contributor, when you, every week, we're going to be paying people based on their credit. And you can kind of choose, do you want to take a dollar payout, use it to buy coffee, pay rent, that's great. Or, if you don't really need the money, you could just go and be a sponsor as well as a contributor. So rather than taking, say, $10 out of the pot, 
you could take mana instead. And so this is a way in which both contributors and uh, sponsors are getting this trusted resource, which allows you to play the further game of curating <coughs> the distribution. from a place of ignorance and only observation. So when I look at Bitcoin, I love Bitcoin, I think it's a great idea, but it seems like the reward is not market rate for that same work if you, you do it in a Western uh, country. So how can we incentivize open source work where the rewards are higher than what you would get at like a Patreon or like a tip? Right, that's a great question, basically like, how can we move open source support out of small change in coffee money and into the kind of rewards that people get when they're like playing the game of capitalism in a broader sense? Uh, I really see this game as the first step in a larger vision. Uh, I think that we can leverage the power of tokens and the power of cryptocurrencies to start to create assets that represent the value of open source projects. Um, so you can imagine like, like right now this mana very loosely represents the value, value in an open source project because you can use it to prioritize things you care about. If I have a bug that I'm really need fixed and I have a bunch of mana, I can use that mana to boost that bug and that will make more cred rewards for people who work on fixing it. Uh, that lets you get a little bit of the value because sometimes you know, like people will need work done in open source so they would express it by buying mana, by donating to the project and paying contributors. I think where it gets really interesting is when you start to build economic structures that are able to propagate the rewards from uh, communities to their dependencies. So maybe every project that depends on IPFS is giving some of their tokens to the IPFS project. And then we find a way to get the, the closed source proprietary use cases to also play the same game. Uh, this is where ideas like harbinger taxation come in, where maybe we could make a new license that says anyone who depends on this project needs to pay uh, needs to assess the value of their project and how much they, they kind of want to hold it close to themselves and pay a tax on that value to all of the open source projects they depend on. And then if someone is willing to pay that amount, they're forced to open source it. So this would be a game where if you want to keep something closed source, you need to pay open source. And if you want to be open source, you can use everything for free. Uh, and I think that we, we are not ready yet to really start experimenting with these projects because we don't have anything better than paying the maintainers as how we're going to split those rewards. And I think that will be really bad for these communities. Uh, so that's why I'm focused first on like coming up with cred so that when we start to do more ambitious experiments in funding open source, we're starting from a strong foundation. You had an expanded question in there really about market rates that I'd love to cover end of day in the fishbowl. Okay. If you could hang on to that, it's something I'm interested in as well and came up at our talk last week uh, as well, so thank you. So it sounds like even in the the forum aspect of the cred, you miss a lot of like social uh, or people work that gets done to like for example, how would you get paid for what you're doing now? Right. So it's still very much an incomplete system. Uh, I think there's there's this law on the internet, and I forget what it's called, but it basically says that the best way to get the right answer on the internet is to post the wrong answer on the internet, and people will show up to try to fix it. Uh, and I think of source cred right now as like a really principled attempt to post the wrong answer, answer on the internet in a way that invites people to fix it. So one of the things that I imagine these curators doing is going and saying, whoa, we're missing a node in the graph. Dandelion gave this like talk at uh, the Berlin Open Source Salon and that was important to the project and they're getting no cred for this. And so the curator will spend their mana to create that new node in the graph. And then as their reward for doing the work of like you know, the legwork of finding out this talk happened, maybe figuring out that Boris organized it and Boris should be connected, and even like finding a list of attendees and people who ask questions, you, know, you can go on and on. Uh, that curator will then get a fraction of the cred that flows through that node. So I basically want to make a game where it's like, yes, the scores are incomplete, and they always will be, but anyone who helps fix the scores and make it a little bit more fair will get rewarded for the work that they're doing for the project. And I'm gonna go look up the list of internet laws, because there are many, and I will share them later. I, I can't find it right now, but um, yes, there are many laws. Oh, 
Oh, okay. I'm going to be really brief, but shouldn't the uh, treasury line go actually to cred directly? Because shouldn't, I mean, why would you, isn't the payment from the treasury determined by the amount of cred? So what I, what I kind of imagine with this diagram, which by the way, I made in like a 15 minute stretch immediately before this talk. Uh, so there will be better, 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 better documents to come. Uh, what I intended here was the idea that like cred is kind of the interface that is determining how the payout from treasury to contributors happen. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't take anything. I, ha I had a lot of little internal struggles about like the directions of the arrows here. Uh, the, the intention is to be evocative rather than like totally descriptive. Oh, okay. Well, then that answers my second question, which was, isn't cred, isn't mana actually derivative of cred? Yes, you're totally right. And I couldn't align the things without <laughs> duplicating the cred node. But I really encourage you to come uh, on the source cred discourse because I would love to like engage with these questions in more depth. It's literally trying to give out free cred. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. Other questions? Hi, great talk. Uh, I was just, I just thinking about how, how you might contrast this with something like uh, Stack Overflow where people are given uh, like reputation points for their answers and they can be the, they can lose points uh, or gain points. And have you thought about that in the design? So I spent some time talking to people at Stack Overflow uh, about that system. Um, and I think that I'm actually trying to do something very different than what Stack Overflow did. What Stack Overflow was trying to do was create a system that reliably promotes uh, high quality answers so that when you have a particular programming question, you're like very likely to be able to get a good result from the site. But they're not as focused on questions like what kind of power dynamics will this system create? And so you see things like if you, if you kind of like get to stake out the first uh, good answer to a question that's going to be asked a lot, even if it's not that important a question, you know, it could be just like, how do I use, the, like, how do I split words in Python? Uh, you can get an enormous amount of points because there's going to be thousands of people putting this question into Google every day and upvoting you. Uh, so you see sort of like run around, run away, like rich get richer power dynamics. And that's fine because the points are not intended to flow money. They're not intended to be used in questions like governance of Stack Overflow. Uh, they're just there to like filter content. I think that source cred has an enormously harder problem because the power dynamics of the system matter and because we imagine wanting to use this for things like flowing money and doing governance. Uh, so it's it's like drawing inspiration from, but you need to do a lot more work then. You essentially have the challenge of building a parliamentary system or somewhat similar on top of something that just looks like internet comments. Right. Other questions? Amazing. Thank you so much, Dandelion. Thank you all so much for your attention.